the spring 2022 watercolor snacks box. This is a subscription, a quarterly subscription that you can get from Art Snacks. And each quarter you get a box of four or five full-size watercolor focused art supplies. Um, that includes a mix of individual products and sets. Uh, some, uh, usually they're limited first look or exclusive editions. Uh, you get a tips and techniques guide, a menu describing the products included in the box. Besides the box, your subscription gets you two or three interactive online classes each quarter. Okay, this box I got a Strathmore watercolor book. Uh, it's a soft cover, kind of a leatherette feel to it. Um, at the end of this I'll show you uh, what the texture of the paper is like and um, do some painting on it. This is Strathmore's 400 series which is their intermediate grade uh, paper. Uh, it's cold press and there's 48 pages it's 8 by 5 by 5 point inch, um, 140 pound weight, has a Smithsone binding, and the paper is acid free. The book does lie flat. You need to coax it a little bit by you know, rather gently folding it backwards or pressing down on the paper. But then you'll have a little bit of spring on the, the left side, but it pretty much lies flat. Every one of the boxes will include something to paint on. The other supplies come in a nice bubble wrap bag. I, I love these kind of bags, so I'll be keeping this one. <clears throat> I received two Faber-Castell watercolor markers. Uh, these come in random colors. You'll get two of them, but you don't know what colors you get. I got phthalo green and orange glaze. These are two-sided markers. You have a smaller bullet tip and then on the other side you have a, a wider tip. There's a Sakura microperm pen. Uh, the nib is a point or it's, yeah, O3 size and um, it's not just waterproof, it's designed to write on almost any surface. I use it to label the watercolor pans uh, as well as do some drawing in the Strathmore book. Next we have some washi tape with the Watercolor Snacks logo on it. Uh, that's a low tack tape that you can use for decoration. Next we have three watercolor brushes. Uh, they're all a different brand. This is a three-eighths of an inch dagger brush. Uh, it's a King Art Original Gold 9800 series golden tacklon brush. Very nice for doing swirls and swoops and various lines. Next, we have a Winsor & Newton Professional Watercolor Synthetic Sable Brush. It's a size zero round, um, and it's designed to mimic sable hair. It has an ergonomic handle. The third brush is a Royal & Langnickel Zen Series 83 Watercolor Brush. It's size four. Uh, it has a, a cool metallic handle that has a beveled and I'll show you more of that later. The next item is a Van Gogh watercolor pocket box. These colors were chosen specifically by the Dread Pirate Brie, it's Brianna Boyd, uh, who's an artist and illustrator, and she leads some interactive classes using the supplies specifically from each quarterly box. Um, and she had the spring in mind when she chose these so the nice spring colors. I, I love these boxes. I've had some not with these exact colors, but there are lots of different sets that use the same box. 
The colors that are included is Azo Yellow Light, Pyro Orange, Matter Lake Light, Hooker Green Deep, Quinacridone Purple Red, Turquoise Blue, Rose, Sap Green, Permanent Red Deep, Permanent Yellowish Green, Permanent Blue Violet, and Thalo Green. I've listed all these below. Um, and along with the pigment information and the characteristics, uh, light fastness and transparency. It's all on the wrapper, but I find them hard to read, so I, you can go online to the Art Snacks sites and find the information. This set comes with a little travel brush. Uh, honestly, I found that it's not usable for a lot of things. It's great for like if you're out plain air or on the go and just want to do a real quick little sketch, but it doesn't hold much water and it's, it's so small holding it in your hand that you're, you're not going to be able to do full-size paintings with it. It's a very nice feature nonetheless because it fits so well in that little top uh, lid to the paint box and it's always really handy. Uh, there's lots of room here for mixing your paints in those uh, insets. And the box itself is sturdy, but it's very lightweight. It really is a nice little box. Something else that you get with each box is uh, a sheet that on one side it shows you uh, something about all of the items in the box. On the other side of the sheet, there will be some kind of technique. This quarter, it was a scoring technique. Uh, these are really nice. You can save them and have a library of techniques, plus some information about various brands. Each quarter, there are a couple of fun things in the box. A sticker with the Water Snacks logo, the watercolor snacks, and a yummy piece of strawberry Laffy Taffy. Okay, I used the microperm pen to write down the names of each of these colors. I really like this palette. It's got, it's plastic, but it's a sturdy plastic. It's not going to break easily. It's very lightweight. And the way these are set in, there's a little bit of a, a, a dip in here. So, even if you use lots of waters on these, like this one right here, you see where it's spilling over. It's not going to be as likely to spill over into the next color. You've got lots of room between them and a little bit of a rise in between. That really comes in handy with a, a pan paint. They also, re these colors reactivate really easily. Yeah, I'm just going to paint right over the names. This will give me an idea of how opaque the colors are. That was Azo Yellow Light. This one's Pyro Orange, one of my favorite oranges. Hooker Green Deep. I've got it down below in the description area, I've got the pigment information, you know, the different pigments that go into these colors and whether they're transparent or opaque or whatever they are. This is Quinn Purple Red. Another color that I really like, turquoise blue. This really is a beautiful combination of colors. Matter Lake Light. Rose. Sap Green. Permanent Red Deep, Permanent Yellowish Green, Permanent Blue Violet, and Thalo Green. And here are all the colors dried. And um, There's a little color shift. All watercolors lighten a little bit after they dry, but really 
it's not too bad and you can see that you can get some really intense colors here where I, I let it flow. Yeah, these Faber-Castell pens are actually very nice uh, in that you can just draw with them just like a regular marker. You've got this smaller bullet tip and then you have this larger pointed tip And then if you wish, you can come along with a brush and get a nice spread of color. I've used these type pens quite a bit in the past and, and they're a lot of fun. You can come in here in your wet paint and just draw right in and then blend it in. Uh, another technique that you can use if you have any kind of a, a plastic or glass anything that's not absorbent since what I have on hand is this Van Gogh box I'm going to use it you can scribble your your color in there come along with your wet brush and pick up the color and that, that's nice if you want like really pale tints or you know, you notice that I'm really able to spread a lot of color that way. Let's pick it right up. Do some more here with these lines. This you can actually get a narrower tip or a narrower line with this than you can with the bullet tip just because it comes to such a nice sharp point. So it, it's really nice to do this kind of drawing or you can do a night nice, using the side do a really nice broad line it's really handy and with the bullet tip you you get a pretty narrow line you can see it's it's almost as narrow but not quite as narrow as you get with that sharper tip. And you can use the side of this. Uh, you're not going to get as much of it. You get a little broader line. But this is really good like if you want to do some hatching. Get in there. And now I'm, I'm doing this into the wet paper so you see I'm getting a little bit of bleed. Um, sometimes you want that. There's If you don't want it then don't draw into white uh, damp or wet paint. <laughs> If you catch the lines while they're still wet and apply more water, then you can blend them out and dissolve them entirely. If the lines are dry, then you won't dissolve them entirely, but you'll get a lighter hatching and it'll kind of blend out. It's a very nice effect. Okay. Uh, these are also they're self-cleaning tips, which means... I can take this orange and go right over the green and then you see that that has stained it but then I just scrub it usually you would use a scratch piece of paper but I'm playing with this and you scrub it a little bit you don't apply pressure don't apply pressure on these or you will smash the nib and pretty soon your colors back to true uh, they will stain, but that won't affect the color. The next thing I'm going to show you here is the microperm pen. And you can see what for one of the first things I did, because I always lose any charts that I might have, was to identify what these paints are 
on the actual pan and I use the microperm pen. It's a very nice size. I can fit quite a bit of writing on here. And you can see even though it, there's been some wet and some paint in there, it's not fading or anything. So that right there makes it very handy. Put that back in. Now let's see what it can do. I used it for the writing when I did the color chart. Have to be careful because the setup I have here, if I rest any weight on it at all, it moves down on me. You may have seen it <laughs> jerk suddenly a few times and that's why. But now with this microperm pen, it gets some really nice fine lines. I can tell I'll be using this a lot. I like it. I probably will save it and use it mostly for things like writing on these pans just because it's so much thinner than something like a Sharpie bullet point tip and so I'll, I can get a lot more writing in it but it would be excellent for drawing as well. Nice quick little sketches or you could do something much more is uh, extensive. Skinny legs and all. I'm probably aging myself with that song. that. I'm going to try the scoring technique here that comes on the technique sheet. Uh, it says to lay a damp wash so I'm going to get some water on my brush. And it shouldn't, it says not to let it puddle. So you want And this King Art brush is very good for this purpose. I'm not following the sheet exactly in, in how it looks because that's not what this is about. And just let this other color kind of blend. Now I'm switching to the Zen Art brush for the beveled edge. Okay, you don't press too hard, but enough to make an impression in the paper. And that's pretty much it. I don't know if you can see them too well there. See the lines that I've scored into the paper. Since I don't have a brown in this mix, I'm going to start with a yellow. Need a little more water there, I think. I'm kind of using the side of the brush. Bring it out. That's a, a nice, it comes to a nice point. It's smaller than I normally use, but great for getting some smaller detail, or if you're just doing a real small sketch. Yellow and purple are complementary colors and tend to make a neutral, so you see they make kind of a reddish brown here if you mix them. I'm just going to do it here on the fly so that I can get kind of a natural streaked look. Okay. 
And then I go down here to the bevel edge and let's kind of make a little knot in here. Can you see it? Yeah, there we go. So I've I've added the texture of the bark. I'm just gonna show you the lines that you can get. Some nice stippling with this. Let's add a little stippling here along in this. I'll add that on there. Get that. Notice how those lines pop out when you put some more color on there. shading. Yeah, I like that. Okay. So. When you're doing a circle, you might think that you need to apply more pressure to guide the brush, but that squashes the bristles down. You need less pressure and just swirl your, your arm and let the brush do its work. Now, one of the things that you kind of need to be sure you do when you're using this kind of brush if you want to be doing a sweep is load both sides of the brush. You'll get a different effect than if you just load one side. Especially if you want to do some twisting around. And like most Taclon brushes, it's, it's going to splay at certain times. I kind of like that effect. And that, uh, that, a lot of that is dependent on how much paint you have on the brush. Because that's happening partly because of the bristle splay where you get those little gaps. You can do that on purpose if you want. Or you can actually put that against the white of the paper. You can see how you get the little gaps among the bristles. That happens as, the, as you get a drier brush, you don't have as much paint on it. So part of that is the nature of the tack on, part of it is your technique and how much paint you keep on the brush. There are times that, that you want that effect, that would be wonderful like for a light glistening on the water. You can do a very nice thin line. It's great for like these leaf shapes. This is probably the best type of brush to have for a leaf shape. Let's play with the Windsor Newton brush. This particular one, uh, this has a very small round. It's a little long, uh, not terribly so, but I, I don't know if I would call this a rigger. Do they call it a rigger? No, they just call it a round. But it's close to being a rigger where you can use it to do these long, thin lines. It's kind of what it's mostly made for. Being small like this, it doesn't matter what your brand is, it's not going to hold a whole lot of paint. There's just not enough bristle to do that. And there are some 
techniques where you could do a whole painting with a brush like this, but a whole lot of work to, seems like to me. <laughs> That's a nice brush. Okay, so. I'm going to, yeah, this is not part of the technique as in the book, but I'm going to take just a little bit of this darker green and run it along here. kind of pick up that scored line there that paint gets in there it picks it up yeah it would just depend on on how much you want your lines your scored lines to show if you put another color I really wouldn't have had to use a darker color up that scoring. And I'll take, let's go ahead and use a little bit of orange here. Give this kind of a variegated look. Oops, I got quite a bit of paint on that. I didn't want to. gives you an idea of what you can do with these brushes. This painting was done in the Strathmore using the Van Gogh paints and the brushes. Um, I did the initial drawing with the microperm pen. I used masking fluid to create the clouds and some little white flowers down in the foreground. Um, and I found that it peels off very easily but when I go to paint over it, there's a little bit of pilling on the paper, so it does do some damage. To further test, I used masking tape around the painting, and it also came off just fine. Afterwards, I painted a little bit, and it's the same as the masking fluid, so use either of those with care. Otherwise, uh, the painting worked beautifully. Um, I think that for some people, the color will lift more easily than they like, but that's pretty common with anything except 100% cotton paper. For more information about any of these products, please read the full review at doodlewash.com. The link is down below.